Hello, we're going through some discrete random variable questions here. So let's have a look at the first one. Um, in these questions, they are telling us that the probability uh, can be different for different values. So this sort of large bracket is saying that this is what the probability is, and it can be four different things in four different situations. So for values minus 3 and minus 2, it's 0.15. Minus 1 and 0, it's alpha, and for 1 and 2, it is 0 0.1. And the sort of 0 for otherwise is an important bit, because that limits what we're allowed these values to be. Because it's discrete random variables, um, we know that there's no 0.5s, there's no decimals, there's, it's just minus 3 to 2. So we can make ourselves a little table. We can make ourselves a table of x values, which are going to go minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2, and then probability values that go with that. And so for minus 3 and minus 2, it's just going to be 0 0.15 for each of them, because when x is these values, that's what the probability is. 0 point, oh, that's a 0, not a 6. Uh, not easy to do with the mouse. There we go, 0 0.15. There we go. Uh, it's this alpha value next for uh, 1 and 0. Those are terrible alphas, but there we go. And 1 and 2 is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. So a little table like that doesn't hurt just to get things going. Uh, and just it just makes it easier to read these values. First thing is find the value of alpha. Well, we know that all of this adds up to 1. So you can just add up the 0.5s and the 0.1s, take it away from 1, and obviously there's two alphas, so we just divide down to get one of the alphas. And then it wants the probabilities. Well, the probability of being between minus 1 and 2, but we can be equal to minus 1. So if we just tick off the bits that, that we can be, x, in this case, for this question, can be minus 1, so yes. And anything up to 2, but not 2. So we can be 0, and we can be 1. So they all get a tick. They look more like Vs than ticks, but there we are. So to answer question B, we're just going to add up these three probabilities. Remember, if you can be one thing or another thing or a different thing, if you don't mind which thing you are, you add up probabilities. And because we can have a, an x value of anything between minus 1 and 1 inclusive, we're going to add those up. You only multiply probabilities when you want this and another thing to happen at the same time. That's when you'll multiply them together. For question C, it's exactly the same. Uh, we're just going to tick off the ones we want. Let's change to a different color so we can uh, tell which, you know, which question is which. So this, any value of x, greater than minus 2.3. So minus 3 is not bigger than minus 2.3. Minus 2 is bigger than minus 2.3. So we will have that one. It doesn't matter that, that that's a decimal. It just means that, you know, it's drawing the line somewhere in between. Well, is, is minus 2 bigger? Yeah, it is. Uh, minus 1 is bigger. 0 is bigger. 1 is bigger. And 2 is bigger. So for question C, we're just going to add up all five of those to get our answer. Now question three is exactly the same as question two. So I'm not going to do this one in as much detail, uh, but basically uh, just run through, uh, you know, the same method. Uh, at least it starts the same, I should say. Right. So question three, it says the discrete random variable, and we've got this same situation show that k is 0.25. Now, appreciate that in your table here, you're going to get lots of algebra. So you're going to get uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3 uh, for your x values. And for your probability underneath, you're going to have to write out um, the number of k's. Now, because this has got x in it, the x values are these values. Okay, so 2 minus 0 is 2. So this is 2k. 
So you don't need to write it out with all the x's in. We can substitute the x in because it's this x value for 0, x is 0. For 1, x is 1. So 2 minus 1 is going to just give us 1 lot of k and so on and so forth. Okay, you fill those in. And we know that all of these add up to equal 1. So you can make this then into a formula by saying this plus this plus the next one plus the next one. They're all in terms of k. So you can add all that up, divide, and work out, um, hopefully, that k equals 0.25. Right, so that's setting up the table. And ideally, you'll finish that, and you'll get this value of k. Two independent observations, x1 and x2, are made of x. OK, so what does that mean? Two independent observations. If it was a game, uh, then it means we're going to play the game twice. OK, x1 is the first go, x2 is the second go. If it was uh, you know, a dice that we were rolling, I'd say a bias dice, because different outcomes have different probabilities, um, then we're rolling it twice. But we don't know what it is, so they're calling it an observation. OK, and what it's saying is show that the probability of x1 plus x2 equaling 5 is 0. Right, so what on earth is it saying? We've got two equal signs there. So x1, remember, is the first outcome, and x2 is the second outcome, and we want that to be equal 5. So we need to look at how many ways this is possible. We could roll, or whatever it is, we could have an outcome of 0, 1, 2, or 3. So obviously there's uh, several ways uh, we could get five. Oh, not several ways actually. And there's two ways uh, we could get five. We could get a two, then a three, or we could get a three, then a two. Now you could, if you wanted to, draw a sample space diagram for this. So you could have your you know, not one, two. That's not a two. 0, 1, 2, 3 along the top, and you know 1, 2, 3 down the left. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You could say this one is uh, x1, and this one is x2. And then fill in the, the table for what we're doing. We're adding them up. So we get 0, 1, 2, 3 there. Uh, no, Z 1 plus 0 is, in fact, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, as you can see, there's two ways of getting the 5 there, which is what it says it wants. Uh, the 2 and then the 3, or the 3, sorry, and then the 2, which is what we said before. So why is this a probability of 0? Well, if you've worked out what the probability of 2 is up here, then I think it will become clear uh, why that is a probability of zero. And the way you work out the probability of the two, remember we've got to get a two, then a three, it's going to be the probability of rolling a two multiplied by, because we want both of these things to happen in order to get our five, that's why we're multiplying, and the probability of three. So once you found out what the probability of getting a two is up here, uh, it's pretty obvious that when you multiply that by this, you're going to get zero. And the other one, probability of a three times probability of a two, well, that's just the exact same probability because multiplication is commutative. Zero plus zero is obviously zero. Right, so that's question B. Question C, find the complete probability function for x1 plus x2. Okay, well the probability function is this thing. Okay, so what you could do is you could um, work out what the uh, probabilities are for each number. So from our sample space diagram, we know that the possible outcomes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And you can use that sample space diagram that you drew, hopefully, um, to work out what the probability is for each of these values. So what is the probability of getting a zero? Well, it's a zero and a zero. 
which is 2k times 2k, uh, which is 4k, and whatever you got 4k to be, uh, sorry, k to be, well, we know that from here, it's a quarter, so 4 times a quarter, wait, what is going on here? No, of course not, it's 4k squared, I thought I was going crazy for a second, 4k squared, so 4 times a sixteenth is going to be a quarter. Does that sound about right? Have I made some? Shouldn't be doing it in my head. I made a mistake there. Um, once you know what those values are, so you do it for each one. Remember, if there's several ways of achieving the same thing, so you could get a naught and a one, or a one and a naught. So when you've worked out the probability, you've got to remember to uh, double that probability because there's two ways of doing it. Getting a two, of course, there's lots of ways to do it. There's naught and one, one and naught, or no, sorry, there's naught and two, two and naught, or there's one and one. Three different ways of doing it. You need to know the probability of each of those ways and then add them up to get the probability. Do that for all of these, and when you've got the probability of all of them, add them all up, check they equal one, which they should do, and then you can write it in this form. So if any of them have the same probability, you can say equals, uh, write that probability, 0 0.25, for example, and then say that's for x equals 0 and 3 and 6 or whatever the answer, you know, whichever ones are that. If it's, uh, and then if it's 0 0.1 for something, you'll write 0 0.1 there and x equals and all the ones that have that. And if they're all different, then you could write it as a table instead. Um, or you could write just the list of probabilities and x equals 0, x equals 1. It doesn't matter how you write that. You, it might be easier to do it as a table. Obviously, you'll label it X and probability and maybe even draw on the lines if you're feeling a bit snazzy, you know. Oh. But I think that's what they're looking for in question C. Finally, it says find the probability that P is less, sorry, is greater, sorry. Find the probability that X plus 1, X1 plus X2, gosh, I'm not doing very good at speaking today probability that x1 plus x2 is greater than 1.3 or equal to it or less than or equal to 3.2. Now of course you can't be equal to 1.3 and 3.2. It is discrete random variables and we've only got whole number answers to this. So basically what we're looking for here is 2 or 3. Yeah. So when you've got your either your table or your list like this uh, you just want to get the probability of getting a 2 and a probability of getting a 3 from what you did in part C and just add them together. Okay, but remember to use your table from part C, not your table from part B, because for part, um, did we do, oh, did we do a table in part A actually? So if you do the probability, if you look at the table for part A, that's just the probability of getting the x value, so that's no good. You need to use the uh, probability function that you made in part C in order to answer this uh, because this is about x1 and x2 added together. Okay, hopefully that helps. Give the questions another go now that you've um, had a bit of a, an explanation about what you should be doing. If you still have any issues, then let me know in the comments down below. Thank you very much and see you next time. Oh, can't find the stop button. Here we go. Right, see you.